Welcome back, everybody, to another Lukuti Maran Shear. Uh, this, I think, is maybe our 23rd or 24th Shear inside text based Shearum. Before we begin, as always, if you're interested, let me fix the camera over here. If you're interested in more Shearum, you could check out the Breslov Research Institute website on their SoundCloud, on their YouTube page, on their website, and their daily emails. The Shearum are going out. And as well as my SoundCloud for previous classes, if you go to Nach Daily or Shai Sussman and SoundCloud, you'll see a whole list of text-based Shearum. Now, this is the fourth class in Lesson 78 in the second Chelek, Tinyana, which I'm calling Simple Man. And uh, tonight, Amir Tashem, we're going to finish this lesson. So that's exciting. There's so much here to talk about, but uh, for the sake of everybody who's joining for this year, for the sake of everybody who's listening, I'm going to keep it, I'm going to keep it moving. So far, tonight, we're going to finish the piece. And then we're going to double back around to talk about what Rabbi Nachman called the Derech Eretz Yisrael, the path to Eretz Yisrael. And we're going to bring a different chaz- a bunch of Chazals on it. We'll see from Chaim Aran. We'll see from Sichas Aran. We'll see from the Rambam. We'll see from the Ramad Wali, one of my favorites for Rabbi Nachman. Maybe we'll talk about the Ramad Wali when, when we come up to him. And they, uh, so after we finish again, we'll circle back around to speak about the Derech Eretz Yisrael. Also, a quick recap from where we left off last week. Last week, we were talking about the famous line of Rabbi Nachman that was in this lesson of Ein Shum Yish Ba'olam Klau. There's no such thing as Yish. Yish. Yish doesn't exist. And how there's always hope, no matter what a person is up to. Because the truth is, the truth is, is that... The truth is, is that, uh, as we were explaining throughout this lesson, that uh, Rabbi, Na- Rabbi Nachman explains that Hashem made the world in such a way that even a tzaddik needs to fall from their levels and separate from Torah. So as we've been explaining throughout these classes, the reason for that is, is because when the tzaddik falls, so what happens is uh, Hashem sends him his light of chesed chinam, his unbridled, amazing light, his light, which Rabbi Nachman calls the path to Eretz Yisrael. And therefore, a, uh, that light gets sent into the world. It gets dished out. And because of that, a person could connect to Hashem, the, what Rabbi Nachman calls the Torah Ne'elemas, the hidden Torah in the, entire, in the entire creation. So there's always hope. And I think it's apropos to what's, a, uh, what's going on in life that, you know, with protests and different things, people feel hopeless. You know, people feel hopeless. So uh, I'm not saying you should riot or anything like that, but it's amazing how when you learn Rabbi Nachman, it, 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 we're going to see even further how it, it always, it's, it, with Torah Saponimius in general, and I find in specific with Rabbi Nachman, is that it's always relevant to your life. It's always relevant to, the, to, the, uh, uh, to what's happening in the world. So I'm going to start with the screen share. Let's do screen share. And we'll just jump right in. Let me just make sure I'm doing this okay. Hold on. Screen share. Okay. Here we are. Center this on my screen. Okay, here we are with Srichen. This is really the last paragraph. It's kind of where we left off. Usrichen. Okay, you see that? Usrichen. Okay, usrichen levakesh ma'od. So we left off saying that even when a person falls, they should never give up hope. They should always grab shitas. They should grab simplicity with all their strength. Now we're picking up. Usrichen levakesh ma'od ma'ashem yisbaruch liskot liskar l'tzadik emes. Person, we need to uh, search out to Hashem to be zochet to come close to the true tzadik. Ki ashrei l'misha zochet liskar ba'odo b'chaim chiyuso the tzaddik ms because praiseworthy is the person who is able to come close to the tzaddik while he's still alive. Ashrei lo, ashrei chelko. Praiseworthy is him. Praiseworthy is his lot in life. Ki acher kach hainu lacher misa. Because after a person dies, kasha azma od leskarev. It's very, very difficult to come wow. close to the tzaddik after he dies. Usrichin wow. meod laharbos betfilo betachnunim meod. 
Therefore, a person needs to increase their prayer a lot, a lot, a lot. That while they're alive, you should uh, dive into the merit to come close to true tzaddikim. Now then we're going to see how relevant this is. Because nowadays, the Yetzirah planted in people's heart is working in overtime to confuse the world. Because Am Yisrael is close to the end of the Geula. We're going to come back to that point. And now in days, the Jewish nation, we have such longings and desires, tremendous to come close to Hashem. It was never like this in previous generations. And every individual longs to come close to God. Therefore, the Baal Dover lifted himself up and made arguments amongst the rabbis, amongst the tzaddikim. And he established in the world well-known public figures that aren't true leaders. And also amongst true tzaddikim, he also a uh, he also put machlokas between them. Until a person doesn't know where's the truth. Therefore, we need to ask God constantly. Ms. In order to come close to the true tzaddik, in order to come true to the order, come close to the true tzaddikim. So this is so relevant nowadays that I was thinking we'll tackle each point one by one. But a uh, first, he said that we're at the end of days now. We have to come. We have to try our hardest to come close to tzaddikim, true tzaddikim. Uh, this because this fits with the previous part of the lesson that uh, when the tzaddik falls, we're able to get that light, that chesed chinam, from the, uh, the channel of the tzaddik that gets put into the world. So when a person, the closer a person is to the tzaddik, so the more of that light you begin to receive. So therefore, when you come close to the tzaddik, it's mechazik you even in the time of when you fall. And practically, what does this mean? It's not necessarily a spiritual thing. I'm sure it is talking about spiritual things that I'm unaware of, but just even on a practical level, what does this mean? It means you feel down, life is hard, people feel hopeless, you might feel hopeless, and then you open up a Lakut Maran, and you learn Rabbi Nachman says, never give up. And then you open up another, another Sefer, and it says, stay strong, grab yourself, right? So now a person starts learning, and they start feeling uplifted. The true tzaddikim start uplifting. Even a person learns Daf Yomi, they say, Amar Rava, Amar Abaye. And they're, can they, those were obviously the Tanayim, where it's amazing tzaddikim. So a person starts learning Torah and connecting to Torah, connecting to true tzaddikim, and they start feeling uplifted just by virtue of the fact they're learning. So every time we open up a Lakut Maran, we're connecting to that tzaddik. We're connecting to any safer that we learn. You open up an Ale Shur, you're connecting to Rav Wobi. You open up a Mesila Shasharim, you're connecting to the Ramchal, right? So, but when you learn... There's Svarim, you get such chizuk, you get such encouragement, you get such strength, and that, and that carries a person. Secondly, Rabbi Nachman said in that short little paragraph over there, he said that now in days, he said this in his time, he said this in his time, that we're at the end, right? That we're at the end of days. And he said this already over 200 years ago when he lived. He said, we're at the end. We're ikvasid the meshicha, the ekev, the ekev, the heel, the heel. And because that we have such longing, such gaguim, such yearning, that he says apparently simple Jews and regular people didn't have such longings in, in, in those days. So he said that so many years ago. How much more so nowadays, at the end of the end of the end, as the Lubavitcher Rebbe used to say, Mashiach's hand is on the doorknob. We just need to turn the handle. We need to just turn the handle and already just open up the door and greet Mashiach. So certainly I know it's something that people are feeling with uh, all the world events that are happening. But the point is, is that Hashem is always bringing Mashiach. But we're at the very, very, very end. We're at the end, end, end. And this is something that the great 
the great Nevi'im said, reminded me of the famous Pasuk and Amos. There's a famous Pasuk and Amos that says, and Amos chapter 8, Pasuk 11, Hine yamim ba'im nuom Hashem elokim, v'shilach di rav ba'aretz, lo rav lelechem v'lo tzama l'mayim, ki im l'shmoa es derei Hashem. That in the end of days, what did Hashem tell Amos? Mind you, parenthetically, Amos was known as the simple shepherd. He was known as the simple prophet. So when Amos said these things, he was saying it, he, he himself was simple. I mean, he was a Navi. How can you say a Navi was simple? But on his Madriga, he was known as, he was known as a simple Navi, as one of the Treyasar. So it says, in those days, what's going to happen? Hashem's going to send a famine to the land. It's not going to be for bread. It's not going to be for water. It's, uh, it's not going to be for bread. It's not going to be, uh, it's going to be a thirst for water. It's not going to be thirsting for water. And it's going to be to hear the word of God. So what's going to happen at the end of the days? People are going to be searching and longing and feeling they, that they want to Dvar Hashem. They want to come close to Hashem. They want to, Dvar Hashem is always synonymous with the Pneumius HaTorah, right? Like Yeshaya Novi said, Kumaloa Aretz Deas Hashem Kemayim Yam Lechasim, right? At the end of the days, the knowledge of God, the Das, the Dvar Hashem is going to fill the world. And Rabbi Nachman was speaking that at the end of days, there's going to be, even he said already in his time, how much more our time, that there's going to be such longing, there's going to be, there's going to be such yearning for redemption. If I, if I could say, I, I now, I, I don't want to talk politics in the year. I don't want to talk politics, but I was reminded of this, that maybe you could say in Panemius or something, what's going on in the world is that people are longing for redemption. They're longing for Geula. They're longing for hope. Now, I'm not saying you need to riot. I'm not saying that. You know, but the point being is that that the Dvar Hashem is in the air. People want to be free, right? There's going to be a great Yova one day, and everyone wants to be free. Now, you know, certainly riding is maladaptive, obviously. You know, I mean, don't quote me on that. I don't, I don't want to talk politics. But the point is, the point is, is that there's a certain sense of longing in there. There's a certain sense of redemption. And Rabbi Nachman said that already started in his time. That already started in his time riding that we're at the end of, at the end of at the end of days. Now for the third point that he mentioned in that paragraph, he said that, again, relevant to nowadays, he said that, and because there's such yearning, because we're right at the end, and, and so Hashem made it that all the tzaddikim, that there's going to be false leaders, for some and shall sheker, but also even the tzaddikim themselves are going to argue, right? So what happens is, is that the tzaddikim argue, and you say, well, that guy's arguing on this one, and this guy's arguing on that one. I don't know who will leave. I'm going to throw the whole thing out the window, <laughs> right? So this is something I think that we all sense, you know, uh, during, with all the minyanim, you go to minyan, you don't go to minyan, this rabbi said that, this rabbi said this, this one said this, all talmidic hachamim, all people that know way more than me, you know, but it leaves a person uh, with a sense of lack of hope, because they say, well, if the rabbis can't figure it out, then I certainly can't figure it out. So this is what Rabbi Nachman is saying, that a person, that a person needs to always have hope. And then at the end of days, specifically, Hashem is going to make it that there's machlokas amongst the tzaddikim, amongst the rabbis, that there's going to be such a dissension of opinion that people aren't going to know heads from tails. And this is going to cause uh, a fatigue, a, uh, a chachamim fatigue, you know, a chachamim fatigue that people aren't going to want to listen. People aren't going to want to listen anymore. And they're going to throw out the baby with the bathwater. So therefore, we need to dive into Hashem in order to be niskarev, in order to be niskarev to a true tzaddikim. Because again, like we started with, that the closer a person is to the tzaddik, the more, the more a, uh, the more a person is going to be connected. Okay, now we're gonna, we're going to talk about a. Uh, we're going to go to the next screen show over here. I wanted to bring a few My Mary Chazal. We'll see if we'll get to all of them. I don't know if we're going to get to all of them, but we'll see what we'll get to them. A few things from Rabbi Nachman said about Eretz Yisrael, about the preciousness of Eretz Yisrael, about the path to Eretz Yisrael, and different Chazals and things, and we'll see what we'll get to. And uh, either way, it will be, a, uh, will be exciting to learn. Let's see. Okay, so first up, we have doing screen share. Okay, first is we have over here is Sichos Haran. Uh, lesson 11. around lesson 11. And we see how much Rabbi Nachman valued Eretz Yisrael, the path to Eretz Yisrael, and the derech to Eretz Yisrael. Uh, Ash uh, 11. 
Ashrenu Shashem Yisbarach Heiti Vimanu Ma'od. Praiseworthy Hashrenu that Hashem was so good to us. Shezachinu Lekedushas Yisrael. That He gave us the holiness of being a Jew, the holiness of Eretz Yisrael. So isn't it amazing? Hashem made us Jew, and He said about Himself that He was so happy that He was zocha to be in the land of Israel. How many things stopped Him, and how much confusion, and how many thoughts and how many things that prevented Him. And so much uh, back and forth about his journey to Eretz Yisrael. Mind you, it's all recorded in Shvach Eiran, his Sipor Eretz Yisrael. Uh, it's a bunch of pages about how Rabbi Nachman traveled to Eretz Yisrael. It's an amazing, it's an amazing story. It's a, it's a small safer in its own right. Right? So Rabbi Nachman, he was, he had financial difficulties, but he traversed all of them. He was able to get above them, and he was in Eretz Yisrael. So you see, Rabbi Nachman himself was so happy, he was so happy about just going to Eretz Yisrael. Just his journey to Eretz Yisrael made him so happy. He used to think, one time I was in Eretz Yisrael, and that made him ecstatically happy. And of course, there was every reason in the world not to go, and especially if you learn the story about how uh, he got stuck in Turkey, and there was a war, and he was able to get on a ship. It's, all, it's a whole Misa. But he was just so happy just to be in Eretz Yisrael. Now we're going to go to a, uh, certainly us. I mean, we, it, it's worthy to make ourselves happy if we were ever in Eretz Yisrael in its own right. Now we're going to Sichas Haran 11. Let's see, Sichas Haran 11. Let's go to the screen share. Screen share again. Oh, no, this is going to be, uh, sorry. That was Sichas Haran. We're going to go to Chaim Haran. Uh, Chaim Haran. 15. Hold on. Okay. We're going to do, Chai, this is from Chaim Aran, The Life of Rabbi Nachman, uh, Lesson 15. Achar, Achar Sha'amar HaTorah Tisha Tikunim. After he said his lesson called the Tisha Tikunim. Hanal. V'sham midabar harbe mimalas Eretz Yisrael. And over there he spoke about the advantages of Israel. This is the main battle. It's the main conquering is to be zoche to go to Eretz Yisrael. Right? I, uh, and especially when he said this Torah, he explained even more. Therefore, what? that's why he started that lesson over there. We're not going to go into it. Uh, that's why he started that lesson uh, with Eretz Yisrael. But Amar B'zeh Lashon. Now he says something very strong over here. Very, very strong. But Amar B'zeh Lashon. Misha wrote, said Leos Yehudi, whoever wants to be a Jew, dahainu, lelech madrega lelech midarga lidarga, to go from level to level, e f shark im al yidei Eretz Yisrael. It's impossible to do it outside of Israel, only in Eretz Yisrael. It's only possible to be a Jew in the land of Israel. It's amazing, right? If you want to be a Yid, the only place you could do that is in Eretz Yisrael. And when a person wages that war and they're victorious in that battle to get to Eretz Yisrael, then you're called a man of war. Right? Before you do it, you're considered just a person who, who girded himself, prepared, but you're not called a, a man of war. For Achikach, this, is, this has to do with the lesson that he was speaking about. Uh, let's just skip to the highlighted over here. The Acher Keshegamar HaTorah, Achikach Be'esa Sicha Sha'alti also. Right? And afterwards, when he completed this lesson, I asked him, Sha'alti also, Ma'ka Banaschem, Ba'mesha Martem, Sha'erich Sohi Gedolo Kokach, Shazet Ikar Nitzachan Machama. Rabbi Nassan asked Rabbi Nachman, he said, What was your intent when you said that Erich Yisrael was so big? that the main battle a person has to wage in life is through, it, it, what were you referring to? The garbi the anava amar, and he shouted, he shouted at me, and he said, kavanasi erich yisrael hazos, vipshitas im eila habatim vadiros. What am I talking about? I'm talking about the physical land with the houses 
in the apartments. Klomar, shekol kavanaso bamesh aherik b'malus eretz yisrael kavanaso kipshuto al eretz yisrael hazosh b'nei yisrael noisim l'sham. It means to say, Reb Nelson's adding that his entire intent about speaking about the advantages of Eretz Yisrael, he was talking very, very simply on talking the fact that Jews travel there. That he wanted every single Jew, whoever wants to be a true Jew, to travel to Eretz Yisrael. And even though there are so many reasons not to go, Yeshaber kol hamaniyas, break all the barriers, v'yelech l'sham, and go there, ki ze ikr nitzachon ha-mochama kishizokhin l'am v'l'eret Yisrael, because this is the main battleground, the main war to fight is to go to Eret Yisrael. V'zeh asher heir levavi b'yoyser v'chizki oisi b'yoyser. And this illuminated my heart, Reb Nassim says, and gave us so much, gave me so much strength. L'avar kol maniyas harbo shayab lishir lishbor kulam v'la v'l'eret Yisrael in order to break all the reasons, in order to defeat all the reasons not to go and to actually go. Baruch Hashem yiz Baruch Hashariah be'ezri l'shabra meniyas u'bilbulim v'kubim ke'ele. And Baruch Hashem, I was ochet to break through all the things, v'lavo l'sham, v'lachzor l'shalom. And to go and come back in peace. So just to recap, Rabbi Nachman says, if you want to be a Jew, you want to be a Yid, it's only an Eretz Yisrael. I, but you have yeshivas and you have all sorts of things in Chutz Laaretz where I live and you have kosher restaurants and kosher supermarkets and Talmud Torahs and Bati Madrashim. Rabbi Nachman says, yes, that's correct. You do have that. But it's EF Shar to be a true Jew, to go from level to level in Chutz Laaretz, in the, the diaspora. Only in the land of Israel, only in Eretz Yisrael, can a person be a true Jew. And what did he mean by this, Rav Nassim says? He's, he said, I meant the houses, I meant the apartments, I meant to physically go there, I meant the most simple, simple, basic meaning. And when a person conquers all the, all the barriers and all the reasons not to go, then you're called an Ish Gibor, Ish Mohammed. Then you're called a man of war. Then you're called a man of war. So again, we see how much Rabbi Nachman held of Eretz Yisrael, how much he wanted people to go to Eretz Yisrael, and how much he was a, uh, how much he encouraged everyone to go to Eretz Yisrael. So now we're going to go to the next one. It sounds like what Rav Cook said. What did Rav Cook say? About the, about the land being, uh, about the holiness. When you see a tree or you see a rock, it's not just that. In Eretz Yisrael, there's Correct. A rock. Rav Kook said, yeah. Rav Cook said a rock in Eretz Yisrael is different than a rock in the United States. <laughs> right? This is what Rabbi Nachman's saying. It's exactly what Rabbi Nachman's saying. That a uh, that the land, the houses in Eretz Yisrael, I a rock here looks the same as a rock there. The houses in Eretz Yisrael is different than the houses in 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 the diaspora in America. Like Shlomo Karbach used to say, a uh, he used to say, what's the difference between the mountains, the, the Swiss Alps, and uh, the mountains in Eretz Yisrael? He used to say, the mountains in the Swiss Alps, you call out to them. But the mountains of Eretz Yisrael, they call out to you. <laughs> he used to say, amazing. See, I, I came across something today. I was reading something about the whole business with the, what do they call it? Um, um, white privilege. Okay, now we're going to do a piece in a, uh, another piece in Chaim Aran I wanted to learn with everyone. Uh, let me pull it up over here. We're going to go back to the share screen. I know I'm bringing a lot of pieces today, but they're such, they're such great pieces. Okay, a, uh, this is in Chaim Aran, Kuf so that's 130, 134. Chaim Aran, Lesson 134. Shamati Bishmo Amar Kodem Shenasa. It was, uh, Reb Nassim heard that before Rabbi Nachman traveled to Eretz Yisrael, he said, I wanted to go in order to perceive uh, elevated Chachma, Chachma Ila, elevated Chachma. Ki yesh Chachma Ila visata, because there is elevated wisdom and lower wisdom. The Chachma Sata, Kfar Yeshlo, but the lower level wisdom, uh, that is something that he already had. But he, he wanted, in order to perceive perceptions of elevated wisdom. 
Bishvil Zehu no Seila Erich Yisrael. And because of this, he wanted to travel to Erich Yisrael. The Nishma me Piv HaKadosh. And I heard from his mouth. This is an incredible thing. This is an incredible thing. The Nishma me Piv HaKadosh Amar that he said, should take if Kishahalach Arba Amos by Erich Yisrael immediately, once he already walked four Amos in Erich Yisrael, take if Zachet Lahasig. Immediately, after four Amos in Eretz Yisrael, immediately he merited to perceive everything that he wanted to accomplish from perceiving in Eretz Yisrael from his entire journey. I also heard from his mouth how happy he was that he was able to fulfill his desire in order to make it to Eretz Yisrael. So you see, Rabbi Nachman says over here that after he walked four steps in Eretz Yisrael, he automatically downloaded into his brain was all the hasagas, was the chachma ilah, the elevated wisdoms, and all the divine perceptions he wanted to attain from going to Eretz Yisrael. They were immediately downloaded to his brain after taking four steps to Eretz Yisrael. Now, I have to tack on a story about this. since It's an amazing thing. Just four steps in the land, and he, the whole thing, you know, he could have turned back, right? He could have turned back. Uh, I heard on a Rav Tzviari Rosenfeld fell tape, Zatzal. I hope I don't get this story wrong. I heard this a while ago, that I heard on a tape from Rabbi Rosenfeld, Zatzal, that he said when he went to Eretz Yisrael, he also, after walking four Amos in Eretz Yisrael, uh, he was expecting to have downloaded to his brain all sorts of new information and chachmas that he hadn't had before him because that's what he learned that Rebbe Nachman said. So he was expecting that to happen to himself. And he was very disappointed after walking four Amos and Eric Yisrael, he says that he didn't, he scanned his brain and he couldn't find any new information hidden there. So he says, I went to my Rav, the Kochav Leiv, he had a very, Rabbi Rosenfeld, had a very, I never met him. I just heard his tapes, but he had a very no-nonsense way of talking. So he said, I went to my Rav, the Kochav Leiv, which was Avraham Steinhardt's, and he said to him, uh, he was very bothered. And he said to him what he was bothered by. They didn't have any new information in his brain. And I think the Kochav Leiv, uh, Rav Steinhardt's, told him something along the lines of like, that even though you didn't see it, your mazel see it, and certainly... After walking Dalit Amos and Eretz Yisrael, your neshama uh, received all sorts of all sorts of blessings and all sorts of things. Okay, now we're going to go on. These are amazing pieces. Now we're going to go on to Chaim Aran 156. Chaim Aran 156. Let me pull it up over here. Hold on. Chaim Aran 156. 156, okay? Kufnun Vav and Chaim Aran. Just a few sentences over here. Uh, Amar, this is a very famous thing. Uh, this is a very famous thing that he said. Amar, Hamakum Shalihu Rak Eretz Yisrael. My, my place is only in Israel. Ma Shani Nose, Ani Nose, Rak La Eretz Yisrael. Every place I go, I'm only going to Eretz Yisrael. Ulafi Sha'a, right? That, and he rode the Breslov Gitsiotse. But right now, for the moment, it appears that I'm in Breslov. <laughs> it appears that I'm in the town of Breslov. Right? Right? I'm going to read that again. It's just such an amazing thing. Omar Hamakum Shalihu Rak Erichisarl. He said, My place is only in Israel. Ma Shani no say I need no say rock li Israel. Right? Every place I travel, I only travel to Israel. Ulafi Sha'a, Ani Roa the Breslov Kiyote. But it looks for the moment. It looks like I'm in Breslov, which means he's saying precisely what uh, this lesson is talking about, right? That every place I go, I'm going to Eretz Yisrael, right? Every place. That's where we not going to say that the Derech Eretz, uh, we started with, the Derech Eretz is the Derech to Eretz Yisrael. This is what Rabbi Nachman said, that before giving the Torah, the people had Derech Eretz, Right? They had derech eretz. They just were simple people. They, they had midos. They worked on themselves. They were just simple, simple people. Derech eretz, the way of the land, right? Now, derech eretz, as we're learning, means the derech to Eretz Yisrael. They were sustained from the light of Eretz Yisrael. So much so where Rabbi Nachman said, every, right? 
like we teach little kids, you have to have derech eretz. Show derech eretz, right? You have to have respect, right? But Rabbi Nachman is saying, right now it looks like I'm in Breslov. Let me tell you, I'm in Eretz Yisrael. <laughs> right? It's an amazing thing. It's, it's an amazing thing that even though he was physically in one place, his neshama was in a completely another, another realm. And at every place I travel, I only go to Eretz Yisrael. It looks like I'm here. Looks like I'm here in New York. Looks like I'm here in Inwood. Rabbi Nachman is saying, nope, I'm really in Eretz Yisrael. It's an amazing thing. That's like what Rabbi Yehuda Halevi said. Right, Rabbi Yehuda Halevi said, Libi be Mizrach, right? My heart is in, my heart is in the Mizrach. One could make a strong case over here about religious Zionism. Hey, uh, how Rabbi Nachman held so strong of Eretz Yisrael. I mean, it's, it's, it's really an amazing thing. Now I wanted to go to a Rambam. I'll go back to the screen share. A Rambam and Hilchus Malachim. Now, there's so many chazals about Eretz Yisrael, but I'm just barely scratching. There's even more in Breslov. There's a ton. But there's an amazing Rambam over here, very, very powerful Rambam. I want to pull it up. Okay, let me do the screen share. Okay. Okay. Can you guys see that? Everyone see the screen share over here? This is uh, a Rambam in Hilchus Malachim. A, uh, Hilchus, uh, it's the Rambam in Hilchus Malachim. Uh, chapter five, letter two. Okay, this is a wild thing. This is a wild Rambam. Hold on to your hats, Chevra. Hold on to your hats. A wild Rambam. Leolam yadar adam be'eret Yisrael, afilu be'ir shirubam akum. A person should always live in Israel, even in a place that most of the inhabitants serve avodazara. The al yidor bechutz laaretz, and do not live in chutz laaretz. Afilu be'ir sheruba Yisrael, even in a town that's mostly Jewish. Shekol hayotze lechutz laaretz ki lo oved avodazara, right? Because anyone who lives in chutz laaretz is as if they 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 were oved avodazara. Uh, Rabbi, yeah, can I ask a question. Of course you could. He doesn't say that. He seems to be addressing only people that were in Israel and were leaving. Were what the Rambam? Leaving. Yeah. That's what it sounds like he says, right? Okay, so I'm not, I, I want to give a disclaimer, Vinyamin. So I'm not talking halacha over here because in earlier halachas, he gives different heterim to leave. He gives different right. heterim to leave. He talks about Torah, if you have your Rebbe. Uh, he talks about Parnassah. You have, you have to qualify. You have to qualify the statement. This is not a, uh, for anyone listening to this, this is not a, a, a halachic sock. I'm just reading some wild chazals over here. No, but you said, where does the Rambam say this? It's fascinating. Oh, he says it in Hilchos Malachim, uh, Perik, Perik 5, Halacha 2. You can look it up. He says Hilchus more. Malachim. He talks about Eretz Yisrael. It's based on the Gemara. The Gemara says that a person should live in Eretz There's a similar Lushan in the Gemara in Ksuvis. Uh, I could look it up. I could send it to you later. Maybe I'll put it in the, I'll put it in the description link, the Gemara in Ksuvis, uh, for people that want to look it up. But it's based on the Gemara in Ksuvis, Kuf Yud something. Kuf Lamet something. Okay, I have to look it up. I, uh, but basically, what does this Rambam say, as we just ran inside? It's better for a person to live in Eretz Yisrael, where, no one's, where most of the people in your town are not religious, versus living, that not, not only are they not religious, they're idol worshippers, right? Then living in Chutz La'aretz, where most of the people in your town are religious. Which is the Chiddush, because the Rambam holds that you, and based on the Gemara and Rosh Hashanah, that you shouldn't live in a place where the Roku people there are not Jewish. So again, it's a, uh, someone asked online for all the audio listeners, it's a Chiddush because the Rambam writes someplace else that you shouldn't live in a town where what? Where the majority of the population where is. Where the majority of the population is not doing Rosh Okay, again, this is, not a, this is not an authoritative halachic psak over here. I'm just bringing just bringing different Maimari Chazal on this. A, uh, consult your local rabbi uh, about this. A, uh, but so it's an amazing thing that he seems to imply over here that it's better to live in a town where, in Eretz Yisrael, where people aren't religious than to live in a town, uh, you know, where people are religious. So that's, that's an astounding thing. Now, I want to do something else. I want to, now, this, I could have took a picture of this. I could have took a picture of this, but, but, but I didn't do it. I, I saw this earlier this week. 
there's so many my Mary Chazal about the Derek Eretz Yisrael, about the path to Eretz Yisrael. Uh, I'll, do, I'll, I'll share one or two more with you. So this is a, uh, I'll give a little introduction. This is the Ramad Wali. The Ramad Wali, he was one of the Tamir Ramchal, and he wrote a sefer on Panemius on every single book of Tanakh, uh, interlined in between the words. On Chomish, he wrote two volumes for each one of Chamisha Chumshe Torah. And uh, as many of you know, I give a Nach daily class, uh, and we're in Sefer Ezra now. We just finished Sefer Daniel. So as I was uh, preparing Ezra, the second parak in Ezra, I came, I came across this from Madwali maybe a yesterday or two days ago, and I'm excited. It's, I'm excited to share it with everyone. It's an amazing thing. Just to set the stage, Ezra's about the return of the Jews uh, uh, during the time of Koresh. And there were three aliyahs at that time. There was one by Shabs, Shab, Shabsar, I believe his name was, was the first aliyah. The second aliyah, which is talked about in Parak Bays, which is where this verb Mawali picks up, which is the times, which was in Zerubavel, which is uh, Zerubavel. Uh, he gave, he led, uh, it was close to 40 something thousand people, went up at that time. And the second parak in Ezra, where it talks about the second aliyah, uh, the third aliyah was Ezra. But uh, in the second parak over there, uh, it's just a list of all the names. It's literally a census. It's this family got this many, this many people, that family, that many people, this family, this many people. And it just really goes through the names of the families of the people that left at that time. Mind you, mind you, parenthetically, just inserting, most of the Jewish people did not return at that time. In fact, the Mishnah in Kedushin talks about the Asara Yuchsim Olam of Bavel, that there were 10 types of lineage that came from Bavel, what happened was is is that it was a uh, they were the psula yuchsin they were like the nesinim the the gerim the converts the the mamzerim the psule kahuna it was all different weird types of lineages that came the the purebred so to speak if we could say such a thing the purebred uh, they they would brag that they stayed in bavel <laughs> that they stayed in bavel and uh, it seems that had they not stayed in Bavel at that time, they, 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 they would say that my, our lineage is refined like silver. Why? Because all the Psule Yuchsin, they all went to Eretz Yisrael with Zerubbabel and Shabsar and uh, Ezra. So they were totally left, completely refined. Uh, had, they, had Ezra, had everyone went at that time to Eretz Yisrael, uh, they would, it, it seems that they would have, that would have been the second base of Migdash, that would have been it. And a, uh, but they decide to stay back in the physical comfort of their own homes. Interestingly enough, this is really not the main point, it's a little bit of a tangent over here, but interesting, interestingly enough, at that time, Koresh, uh, Cyrus, he was paying a stipend for people to go. It means he said, I'll pay for your fares, I'll pay for your uh, hotzas. You know, he was, he, was, he was paying people to go to support, support them in Eretz Yisrael. I don't, it probably wasn't as much as they were making in Bavel. But nevertheless, we have amazing organizations nowadays like Nefesh Benefesh and a, uh, all sorts of organizations that people go to Eretz Yisrael. There are stipends given to people at Eretz Yisrael. I actually heard that there was, uh, I think, uh, they, there's, they say they're expecting, I, don't, I, I can't, I, uh, this is what I heard, that they're expecting uh, oh, close to 50,000 olim uh, from America this upcoming year to Eretz Yisrael and Nefesh Benefesh got more applications, I think in the last month than they got in the last several years. So it's really, it's really isn't interesting. I mean, it's not a sheer and safer Ezra. It's just interesting. Okay. So back in the Rod Wali over here about, uh, back in the Rod Wali over here about the Derek Eretz Yisrael. So again, the parak over there lists the names of the families that went up to Eretz Yisrael, even though it was a small, a relatively small, amount of people. So this is the Ramah. I'm just going to read it inside. I don't have the screen share for it. But Acher, it's picking up. What happened was is, is that Koresh gave, in the previous parak ended, with Koresh giving back the Kalim to the Beis HaMikdash for the Jews to use. Nebuchadnezzar took the Kalim. And now Koresh was giving back all the vessels of the Beis HaMikdash, or many of them, for the Yidin to use in order to build the second Beis HaMikdash. So, it's, so the Rod Wali picks up. But Achar Shepirat Mispar HaKalim. After we, ex we enumerate, we explain the numbers of Kalim, the vessels of the Beis HaMikdash that were given back. Immediately, it ex it, the Psukim go to enumerate the holy sparks of souls of the Jewish families that returned to Eretz Yisrael. Meraza de Gimbal Kavim. 
It was from the secret of the three paths of Kohanim, Levim, the Yisrael, Shechazur Eretz Yisrael, that at that time they returned to Eretz Yisrael, Kebonim HaChozrim Eitzel Imam, like children that returned to their mothers. Velechein Karum Bnei HaMedina. And this is why the Pasuk in Ezra calls them the children of the Medina, the children of the state. Ki HaMechavev Es Arzo, this is amazing. It's just so, so beautiful. Hamachaviv it's artso, the esmakomo, a person who loves our land, the esmakomo and the place. Nikra ben mamish shall also makam. Their mamish considered a child to Hashem. Kigam hasharoso shall also makam, he mechavav so. Right? Because also the, the Shrina loves and desires that person. Is, he's beloved to that person. Like a mother that loves the child and just wants to hug the child and have a good heart for their child, right? This is a Jew who returns to Eretz Yisrael, right? A Yid who returns to Eretz Yisrael is so precious. It's like Hashem is giving them a hug. Hashem embraces them. And even more so, when the mother sees that child worn out and down and tattered, and sad, there's all the difficulties that they had to go, that they come to Eretz Yisrael. Right? Okay, and that's why, that's why it, uh, it says this. Hold on. Okay, that's why I said. So, see, the Ramad Wali explains. The Ramad Wali is explaining just outside that he's saying that the reason why the 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 reason why it's recorded in Sefer Ezra the names of these precious families that recorded is because they were holy nitzotos, holy Jewish families that were coming back to Eretz Yisrael, and they're considered like a son to God, mamish. That Hashem gives you a hug when you return to Eretz Yisrael. Hashem is giving gives a hug especially when you come out worn out from Gullus and you come back run down and beat up from 2,000 years of exile to have our people back in the land. It's like Hashem is hugging you. Hashem gives you a hug when you come back so worn and down and downtrodden, like Rabbi Nachman said, right? The, the path is the path to Eretz Yisrael, and that's, that's something that sustained the Jewish people. I recently saw also in Rav Cook, I didn't make a, I didn't make a printing of it also, but Rav Cook uh, seems to say a very similar thing about how a, uh, there's only one road, and that's the Eretz Yisrael. <laughs> it's exactly what Rabbi Nachman says, that this is the Derech to Eretz Yisrael, which means our entire world history, no matter what path a person chooses in life, our entire world history, everything from the beginning of creation until Mashiach reveals himself is only to Eretz Yisrael. There's one Ta'alu HaGa'ula, there's one way that the Gulu is going to work. And at the end, all roads lead to Eretz Yisrael. This is what, this is what Rabbi Nachman said, that we're sustained through the Derech Eretz Yisrael. That the Hashkacha has it, that after 2,000 years, he's returning our people to, or he's our turning our people back to Eretz Yisrael. So that's our destiny. That's the Derech Eretz Yisrael that Rabbi Nachman was talking about. The path to Israel, which sustains the Jewish people throughout their entire thing. The path to Israel, as Rabbi Nachman said, is something that came prior to creation of the world. Right? That's what we were learning about in this lesson. That the Derech to Eretz Yisrael not only was before the Torah, but it was Hashem's Chesed Chinam that Hashem desired even to create the world. That the entire Hashkacha, the entire divine providence, the entire Kivun of the world is to Eretz Yisrael. That's the Derech Eretz Yisrael. Right? Eventually, all the Jewish people are going to end up there. And this is what it means that Hashem sustains the world to the Derech Eretz Yisrael, that there's only one path. There's only one path, and that's, that's the path to Eretz Yisrael. It's the path to Eretz Yisrael. Isn't it amazing? Amazing, guys? It's amazing? Yeah. Yeah, there, there's so many, there's so many Chazals. I think in a, uh, I think in Yirmiya, Yirmiya, Perik 4, Pasuk Yirmiya Perik 3, Pasuk 14. It says, Shuvu banim shoivim ba'alti eschem, lakakti eschem, echad meir, ushtayim in mishpacha, ve'avesi eschem tzion. Right? Hashem says at the end of days, what's going to be? Uh, I'm going to take you two from a, I'm going to take you two from a, 
two from a city, one from a family, and I'm going to bring you back to Eretz Yisrael. That's what he says. Two from a city, one from a family, and I'm going to bring you back there. Sorry. I'm going to take you one from a city, and two from a family. I'm going to bring you back to Eretz Yisrael. Right? This is the Derech Eretz Yisrael. This is the Hashkacha. This is the divine providence bringing the entire Jewish nation. This is what Rabbi Nachman said that we just saw. That he said, every place I go, it's to go to Eretz Yisrael. All right? Every place I go, it's Eretz Yisrael. What did he say? As we were just said a second ago, right? The only path is to go to Eretz Yisrael. That's the only, that's the only path. You went to Eretz Yisrael, you can be so happy. You made it to Eretz Yisrael. So we see the the chashivas and the importance and that the desire that we should have, hopefully to arouse our feelings, to connect to so with Gagun, especially nowadays at the end of days, right? When we're on the last, last, the last, last thing we almost have. Uh, I think there are, depending how you read the sentence, there's 6 million Jews, there's 12 million Jews in the world, 6 million Eretz Yisrael, 6 million in Chutzlar, it depends, different ways, to read the, different ways to read the sentences, but either we're at, Rove of, Eretz Yisrael, uh, Rove of the Jewish people being in Eretz Yisrael now, or we're at almost at Rove of the Jewish people being in Eretz Yisrael. So we're living, we're living in amazing, amazing times. And they, uh, I'm going to do, do a Parsha connection. We're going to wind down with the Parsha connection, and then we'll end. We'll do a quick Parsha connection. Parsha. Parsha in the house. Parsha in the house. Parsha's Baloscha. Now, there's what to talk about in Parshas Baalosha because they complained about the man. They wanted to sink their teeth into watermelons, right? Right, because they were being supported. They wanted, they wanted physicality. And in Eretz Yisrael, is a physical place. You have to work harder. You have to work harder in Eretz Yisrael. You might not have certain luxury. But nowadays, you could get luxury in Eretz Yisrael also. So I wanted to bring from the Haftorah in Baaloscha. I wanted to bring from the Haftorah in Baaloscha. Uh, it's in Zechariah Perak Bays. That's where it starts. This is a famous Haftorah. I'm just going to read the few sukkim. I think they're very self-explanatory, how it fits with the Derech to Eretz Yisrael. So this is, the, again, the Haftorah for Baaloscha in Zechariah. Rani v'simchi ba siyon ki hineni, hineni ba v'shachanti b'sochech nuam Hashem. Sing and be glad, the daughter of Zion, because behold, hineni ba, behold, I come v'shachanti b'sochech, and I will dwell in you. So Hashem is comforting the land itself that, I'm going to, one day, I'm going to come back to you. Not that he ever left, but that I dwell in you. The Nilve, he's talking about what's going to be in the days of Mashiach. The Nilve goyim rabim el Hashem biyomahu vayoli la'am v'shachanti b'sochech v'yadati ki Hashem tzavokos shalcheni alaycha. And I'm, many nations will attach themselves to you. On that day, you will be to me. You will be to me a nation, and I will dwell in your midst. Right? And it's going to be known on that day that I was sent down to you. Which means first Hashem tells Eretz Yisrael, Eretz Yisrael, I'm going to come back to you. And then Hashem tells the Jewish nation, I'm going to come back to you too. And we're going to have two. We're going to have both. Eretz Yisrael, Am Yisrael, in Eretz Yisrael. And you're going to know it's from no one other than me. The Nachal Hashem es Yehuda Chelko al Admas Kodesh, and Hashem is going to inherit. The Nachal could also mean like a river, like Nachal Novea Mikor Chachma, right? It could be like a river, like a flow. There's going to be a flow of people back. You'll, you'll inherit the land of Yehuda, of Judah, and its portions, al Admas Kodesh, on our holy land, Ubachar Oid be Yerushalayim. And Hashem is one day going to choose again Yerushalayim. Right? And all flesh will be silenced. They'll be silenced and they'll be humbled in front of Hashem's Kedusha. So we see already in this week's Haftorah, when we're touching on Eretz Yisrael, we begin the Parshas of Eretz Yisrael, right? That Hashem is going to return the Jewish people back into Eretz Yisrael because that is the derech of Eretz Yisrael. Ultimately, that is the way of our destiny. Ultimately, that is the way of our people that all roads lead to the Derech Eretz Yisrael. All paths, all paths lead to Eretz Yisrael. So I hope this uh, arouses our hearts to connect to Eretz Yisrael, to think about Eretz Yisrael in our minds. For those who have the ability to go, we should all be Zoha to go. And it's really a, uh, it's really nerdy. It's really exciting.
It's really, really exciting. You know, the Zo it says, it's interesting, there's another Pasuk, it says, a, uh, who is like the Jewish nation, one nation in the land? So what does that mean? One nation in the land means America? No, it doesn't mean America. It means Eretz Yisrael. That only where in Eretz Yisrael can we truly be one nation. Can we truly be one nation? The Zohar says on that Pasuk, right? One without the other is not called one, which means Yisrael without the Jewish nation, without Eretz Yisrael, and Eretz Yisrael, without the Jewish nation, are not considered one. We're only considered one when the Jewish nation is in the land, just like we just learned in Zechariah, that Hashem calls out to the land, and then calls out to the people to say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reunite you two. I'm going to unite you two back, back together. Hope you all enjoyed. This is, I don't know, this is the end of the lesson of Derech Eretz Yisrael. Which we zoche to connect to true tzaddikim, to embrace the times when we're in ish pashat, as what we started with. We should embrace the times when we're not able to learn and try to get back to learning as fast as we could, to connect to true tzaddikim, to never, ever, ever, ever give up and understand Hashem is leading us on a greater destiny, supporting the world through His chesed chinam, His oitzer matnas chinam, like Moshe Rabbeinu, and bringing us closer to the path. Of the Derek Eretz Yisrael. Amen. 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 Shkayach. Shkayach.